Hello, and welcome to the Wicker Library. My name is Aaliyah, so happy you could join us today. And welcome to another reading vlog. So this is going to be me filming my little weekend. Uh, and I have a lot of fun little plans. I'm headed into the city for uh, some studying and stuff. I'm probably gonna go book shopping because it's me, <laughs> let's be honest here. And yeah, I'm just going to take you all along with me as I do my little things and I go to my little stores. But today I have work, so I'm going to be reading at work because I am lucky enough to work at a place where when it's slow and stuff, you could just pick up a book and no one minds. <laughs> so the two books that I'm currently reading right now are if We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, one of my favorite books of all time, and I'm rereading it for the sixth time. So if you doubted how much I love this book, think again, bitch. Sorry, that was aggressive, but this this book is polluting my mind and it has me in a chokehold once again, and I'm loving it. I'm having a good time. I'm taking it slow and I can quote half the book, probably more like 70% of the book by now. But the next book I am currently reading is Disability Aesthetics by Tobin Cybers. This book I am reading sort of for class, it's for a class project, so I'm not reading it from cover to cover, I'm reading specific chapters that help assist my project, which is about tropes in fiction that have to do with caregiving and disability studies. So yeah, I'm enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't think I would not enjoy it, but I thought it would feel a lot more academic than it does. It is still a very academic book, but it's it's a lot more accessible than I thought it was, which is nice because it is all about disability, <laughs> so there is that. But yeah, um, I'm going to cut off this clip, finish getting ready for work, and I will check back in later. work I went and treated myself to some pasta at one of my favorite pasta restaurants and I came home and I went to the library for a little bit did one assignment that I had to do for class and now I'm back home so it's been a long day <laughs> uh, I'll be doing a bit of reading but I'm going to be listening to the audiobook of Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood and it's a Jane Eyre retelling and I'm reading it for my class science fiction in the Victoria novel. We're not required to read that book but I'm reading it for one of my projects which I'm doing on Jane Eyre retellings so I'm going to be reading that and watching the BBC TV adaptation of Jane Eyre. So I got that to do tonight. I will also maybe start a rewatch of one of my favorite 
TV shows of all time and with an E with one of my friends. So it's a very chill night inside for the rest of the day, which I'm looking forward to because I've been on my feet all freaking day <laughs> and I'm ready to just lay down and read and watch some TV. True to my word, I have just been laying here on my bed <laughs> reading and listening to Within These Wicked Walls. I don't really know how to feel about it right now. I'm 20% into the audiobook. I really do enjoy the narrator. Um, they're doing a very nice job and they have a nice voice and tone of voice and all of that. Everything is really nice for a audiobook narration. And yeah, I... I do enjoy the connections to Jane Eyre that it has. The romance that's starting is so dumb. And like, you know, it's, you know what's happening. And to be fair, to be fair, I hated the romance in Jane Eyre, but you're not supposed to actually like Jane Eyre and Mr. Rochester, right? Like, no one actually likes them together. So... There's changes happening to this version of Mr. Rochester and this version of Jane. And it's interesting because Jane has a different name. Her name is Andromeda, and um, which is a beautiful name. But Mr. Rochester is still just Mr. Rochester. His, he has a different first name, I think. Magnus? Anyway, <laughs> this is a dumb name. <laughs> but the, he's like fine. Like I, I have very little to no opinion about Magnus, my boy Mag. Uh, <laughs> um, but Andromeda's fine. She, her internal monologue is interesting because she's like, oh, I've been raised on like the streets of crime and like, you know, she's gone through shit, you know, um, which go you, like you, you know that, um, that's all cool. I like characters like that. But then she's been here one day and she's like, Oh, Mr. Rochester? Oh, oh, like, why does my heart go pitter-patter when he, like, be so fucking... Be reasonable. <laughs> be reasonable, Andromeda. And so that's kind of bugging me. But to be fair, to be fair, I don't usually like straight romances, and I also don't usually like many romances in books that, in my personal opinion don't need a romance. So I'm a little disappointed that there's not really any changes with that. Like, it's still dumb. Uh, at least he's not 20 years her senior. So, you know, progress is progress. He's 21 and she's 19. So it's better than her being 18 and him being, what was it, like 42? And yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's just fine. <laughs> Good morning. It is now Sunday, and while I braid my hair, I figured I would tell you about today's plans. I'm looking forward to today a lot, actually. My roommate, Lauren, and I are going to be going into the city. If you didn't know, I'm, I live in New York, so said city is New York City. <laughs> And we are going to go to the Met. Uh, she has a project that she has. Um, she's taking an art history class. And so she has to go look at some art history. And I'm very excited to just tag along with her. Um, and then we're bringing all of our shit, <laughs> all of our homework that we have to do. Then <laughs> we are going to go to Barnes and Noble and Union Square, the like huge one with the big cafe at the top. And we're just gonna do a bunch of homework and it's gonna be really fun. I am going to make a promise. Mm, hopefully it's a promise I can keep where I will not buy any books at Barnes and Noble. I've been doing very well with not buying new books because I have so very many to read still and I have not budgeted for any more books this month. So if I come back with a book haul, fucking yell at me, okay? Y'all y'all gotta keep me accountable. As for the books I'm currently reading and my thoughts, 
If We Were Villains is going very well. I love annotating that book. I love rereading that book. I love everything about that book. And um, yeah, I just, I love that book so much. I'm so curious to see what the author talks about in her like um, interview kind of conversation thing that's gonna happen with um, the reading, not reading, the release of the paperback that I'm going to in May. So there's a little event that Barnes & Noble is hosting. So I'm looking forward to that. In other news, I read more of Within These Wicked Walls. I'm still not loving it, I will admit, which is a bit disappointing. <laughs> I really thought I would love it, but it's just the main character. Sh there's a lot of telling how we should feel about her and what her personality is. And there's very little showing. Well, there actually is showing, but it's showing like a completely different person and not in an intentional way. Like we're being told she's really badass and she has a lot of trauma and she's like, and I'm not saying she doesn't, but like the second she gets in, she's like falling for just some guy. Okay, like, yes, he's rich, and go you, but, like, there are literal ghosts and, like, monsters and shit in your house. So, like, I think your priorities are a little messed up. <laughs> As for disability aesthetics, I'm really enjoying it still. Um, it's always interesting living in a rather large city. Um, part of the time, obviously, I live in New York, but I also live in Oakland, California. And so <laughs> I'm always jump scared by the mention of Oakland. And that book was kind of mentioning some artists from Oakland. And I'm like, I know, I know, that, that's, that's, I'm the only one allowed to be from Oakland. Like in my head, for some reason, I can't imagine Oakland being like perceived, but it's a rather big city, so it makes sense. But other than that, um, I was reading Disability Aesthetics pretty late at night and I was pretty tired. So I might have to reread some sections that I thought I read, but woke up not remembering. So yeah, but those are the updates and I will see you all in the city. this weekend and do my little outro so let's just get into what I read <laughs> I did end up finishing what I wanted to read of Disability Aesthetics by Tobin Cybers I really enjoyed the parts that I read of this I didn't read it all um, I read about three or four chapters from it um, and yeah they were they were good they were interesting i learned a lot uh, a lot more about 
visual art rather than literary art which is what my project is more focused on but it was still very interesting to me and I would recommend it if you're into disability studies at all and I also read a good bit of If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I still have a bit over halfway but I know myself in this book and I know the second half always goes so much faster so I'm not worried about finishing that before I get to see ML Rio in person in May but finally I chose to DNF <laughs> Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. I just could not get behind the romance in this book. I just was so frustrated with it just because the main character would be told to be this person. We never really sh were shown why she is like badass and why she is the way she is. We were just told and we were told to believe that this was the kind of personality she had. But the second she gets into this house, she just becomes an antithesis to that and is immediately falling for this guy who is just some guy. I didn't actually mind him too much. I liked him more than I liked her, which is so rare <laughs> in a romance I don't like. I usually hate the man <laughs> in the relationship. But with this one, she just was so frustrating because it was so wishy-washy, like the personalities. They didn't feel like real people. And it was just such an unnecessary romance and such a forced romance, which was really disappointing because I was reading it because it was a Jane Eyre retelling. And in Jane Eyre, like as much as adaptations and retellings like to focus on the romantic plot, it is very much not a romance. Like Mr. Rochester is only existing in like the second half of the book and Jane isn't even there for most of that time. And like, it would be so interesting to write a book that's like retelling or based off of Jane Eyre and focus on her female friendships and on madness and on all these different concepts that don't have to do with just this this man <laughs> who is just there and she's clearly not very into so yeah that that's that's my take on Jane Eyre retellings and specifically within these wicked walls there's an alarm going off outside so we're just gonna ignore that but yeah, thank you all so much for coming along with me this weekend to go into the city, to just read my little books. It was a lot of fun, and I will see you in the next video.